Hello, my name is Gurpreet Dillon and I'm a professor of information security at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. The topic of our discussion today is cyber espionage. There's hardly a day that goes by without some news item about some kind of an espionage, cyber espionage taking place in the world. The word espionage or the concept of espionage is not sophisticated glamour or some kind of an exciting adventure as the name implies. Its ultimate goal is to collect information without fanfare and without knowledge of targets. Um, espionage not done necessarily by the governments and terrorists, spies or political and military goals. You know, uh, that's normally what we hear in the press. Very recently, uh, the North Korean government was accused of espionage of F-17 planes designs uh, from South Korea. Uh, espionage can be done by many private companies and there is a huge breed of uh, industrial espionage where billions of dollars of are stolen. Companies fear to reveal uh, that they are targets because of uh, competitive disadvantage of course. Industrial espionage uh, really relates to spying to find out valuable information, competitors projects, client list, research data uh, that any company has been uh, involved in collecting over the years. While the goal is diff different than the military espionage, the means used are typically the same. It could be electronic monitoring, eavesdropping, photocopying files, and so on and so forth. The important concept to remember in any kind of an espionage or protection of espionage, industrial espionage, cyber espionage, is that uh, what is really at stake. At stake is your information, is the data that resides on your computer systems or your or computer networks in your company. Uh, so hence, because information is the real assets um, and because you are spending billions of dollars uh, on the research and development of whatever product and uh, services there might be, it becomes very important for us to figure out a way of valuing our information. Uh, there are different methods that exist uh, in terms of valuing information, whatever it might be, it is important for us to understand uh, how much, uh, what's the dollar figure associated with information. Some of the early work in the area of valuing information was done years, years ago uh, when in the UK they established something called the Holly Committee. Uh, Holly was uh, the chief executive officer of Nuclear Electric, which is a power generating company in England. And he was charged with uh, uh, finding a mechanism to uh, value information and really think in terms of information as an asset. Uh, and eventually he came up with a Holly Committee report, which sketches out how information can be valued and uh, appropriately ensured if there is a need to be ensured to ensure that information or even to protect that information. Nevertheless, it is an important idea uh, that information needs to be valued, there needs to be a dollar value linked with it so that we can protect it appropriately. So information as such is as much an asset as anything else um, and it's perhaps at times worth more than the hardware and the software that houses it uh, and it is way more difficult to replace it if it gets lost. Uh, data has a value for two reasons. Uh, first is time and effort that is spent to create it and analyze it. Uh, and second is that data of often has this intrinsic value, a proprietary process, an invention, an algorithm, or a competitive edge that it gives a given company. So hence, it is important for us uh, in an organization to figure out uh, where these assets reside uh, and creating an inventory of these assets, uh, listing the organization assets is very, very important. There's some methodologies that exist out there to do so. I did mention about the Holly Committee report but there are other ways of doing it. The computer emergency response teams housed in Carnegie Mellon have a tutorial on how to asset information assets and I would encourage um, everybody to watch that particular uh, tutorial and download the PDF as well. So the question that always arises is how does espionage occur? Espionage can occur in two ways really. One is the easy low tech way and the other one is more technology technologically oriented and attuned to more technology savvy people. When we talk about the easy low tech way of um, espionage, it's simply that employees are taking the data with them. 
uh, or some kind of a social engineering mechanism is used um, and it generally does not rely on any kind of a technology but it's the gift the gap that some people have and other people fall prey uh, to others in terms of social engineering attacks when we are talking about technology then essentially talking about spywares cookies and key loggers being installed in computers and networks um, so um, motivation varies uh, in terms of which particular method is being used uh, when we talk about low tech perhaps it's the disgruntled employees who are subverting the controls to collect the information and then make it available to other people um, there are different other different ways you know I mean flash drive CDs and they're all methods to be used uh, in order to um, uh, collect data and information and uh, steal it really uh, so one should be able to be in a position to protect against industrial espionage and um, how should one should go about doing so at the onset one aspect needs to be clarified and that is that you cannot really protect against any kind of uh, security threat you cannot have ever a totally secure system um, but there are certain good practices that you can uh, institute which will help us in preventing cyber espionage to some extent so employing anti-spyware softwares uh, using firewalls and intrusion detection systems implementing security policies appropriately encrypting all transactions are some mechanisms that can be used to prevent uh, cyber espionage um, but some of these may not be uh, any good if the uh, sabotage is coming from within the organization and that can be problem problematic um, the, uh, it, but, but there are certainly mechanisms to lessen the risk of uh, internal espionage um, one aspect that we typically talk about is need to know principle being adopted so people who really need to know a certain kind of data a certain kind of information should have access to it so compartmentalizing uh, data is very very important and giving access to people who really need it uh, one needs to ensure that uh, no one person has control over all the critical data at any given time there have to be other people involved and this also uh, comes in as a check and a balance uh, to ensure security um, one needs to limit the portability of storage media and cell phones um, bring your own device policies need to be very very clear uh, because they can be abused uh, for um, cyber espionage no document and media should leave the building uh, no uh, employees should be hired without adequate uh, background checks uh, you know they have to be scans of the PCs when employees leave they have to be um, uh, locked backups of tapes and documents uh, in the company all hard drives need to be encrypted um, and those are some of the mechanisms that one can use uh, in order to ensure that internal espionage does not take place um, and when it does uh, proper and immediate uh, action needs to be taken against those who have been involved and authorities have to be uh, informed particularly if you're in the US then the FBI needs to be informed almost immediately or any other law enforcement agency wherever uh, depending on where you are or which jurisdiction you are in need to be informed and one needs to work very closely with those agencies in order to uh, ensure that the culprits are handled and keeping a log of it everything that you do is very very important because many a times people do not keep a diary or a log and that can be problematic as well so keeping logs is very important um, in terms of prevention and future learning processes that one can establish in a company uh, following a breach uh, and a cyber espionage attack thank you very much I hope you enjoyed this session and I look forward to an engaging discussion thank you